Let's talk Intel. So as I said, you know, let me just set the stage. Um, it was a really big news cycle this week. You, by the way, came back um, from your seven or eight days away and you basically um, jumped on. I think it was like one hour and 30 minutes into your first workday back. I saw your smiling face on Squawk Alley talking with uh, John Fort and the team over there uh, about some things going on with the chips, with shortages, with semiconductors. And by the way, this was like a premonition of what came the next day when uh, Pat Gelsinger announced what Intel is calling their IDM 2.0 strategy, 2.0, 2.0. Right. And this was really, the, it was all about unleashing what Pat is going to do at the helm. Remember, he's only five weeks in. And um, activist investor Dan Loeb, who had written some pretty scathing remarks at a uh, time just before Pat came back about the company, its strategy, its uh, especially its manufacturing, because all its woes in the past few years have really been about meeting its timelines. And he came back and said, I've never, essentially, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but I've never seen um, a CEO make such a big impact in five weeks. So the guy was ready to, I think he put a billion into the company, was ready to start influencing, and he seems really pleased. And so, and by the way, Pat, I'm going to steal a little extra of this one because you've got like the next four topics are going to be a lot of you, but um, we'll weigh in a lot on this one. Um, but he un, uh, unleashed a strategy that had to do with manufacturing uh, and a whole number of new plants and two at the time, two immediately, a $20 billion investment going into Arizona to build two new fabs for leading edge. That's the first part. And by the way, quietly under that tone, he talked about building more fabs in the US and Europe, which announcements are set to come later. Uh, we'll dig into that more. Pat, a fabless, uh, sorry, not a fabless, a foundry approach. Intel is gonna get big into the foundry business, which was really interesting. And they're going to start partnering with Fabs, uh, TSM, UMC, Samsung. They've, they've talked about these different partnerships. Uh, I'll let you talk about that in a minute. And then the fourth uh, piece of it was there was a new partnership with IBM on the research side uh, for them to do a lot of leading edge research. So I talked to death about this. I went on CNBC. You went on CNBC. We talked. Uh, I wrote a Market Watch op-ed. You wrote a great Forbes article. We'll link all this crud in the in the show notes, Pat. Um, I talked a lot about it, but I didn't get too deep into it. Why don't you tell everyone a little bit about what each of those big four uh, announcements means? Yeah, so uh, you can read the news before. So uh, I, I want to give more <laughs> of the takeaways here. But, uh, you know, first off, uh, Gelsinger is a straight shooter. Uh, I competed with uh, Pat uh, when I was at AMD. Uh, I won a few rounds. He, run a, he, he won a, uh, some other rounds. Um, uh, I met with him when he was at VMware uh, as CEO. Uh, and I got to got a one on one with Pat on Monday and, you know, got the skinny. And I think first off, uh, he's a straight shooter. You know, I mean, he used words with me uh, about their prior performance on 10 nanometer as in abysmal, uh, uh, embarrassing. And, you know, that means a lot to me, Daniel, um, the, the openness uh, for somebody to do that. And, yeah, I get that he wasn't around uh, when this was engineered. Uh, but it doesn't matter to me. It's 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 part of what I needed to hear to give me b more believability that they could power uh, into uh, seven nanometer uh, and this twenty billion dollar investment. Uh, I I also um, uh, last tech day I, I told you I keep feeling a little better about seven nanometer and they gave more details on it and I do feel even better uh, because they're going to be using EUV which just um, increases yield. Uh, because it's less passes and you get out more chips because it's less passes. So uh, more more efficient. I will add, and, and this is what some people are misunderstanding, uh, they just kind of read my headlines or my tweets, is uh, I have more confidence in 2023 when Intel 7 nanometer comes online because they're going to be leveraging TSMC 3 nanometer uh, for what their press release said was... Um, uh, client computing products and data center products. And, and so you can imagine having a three nanometer TSMC CPU tile, which will be competing against a three nanometer AMD uh, chiplet. Uh, so it, it should be interesting. So they're hedging their bets uh, on, on TSMC. 
The other thing everybody needs to be aware of is, is that Intel was one of TSMC's biggest customers. Uh, and they, they've always done a, a lot of outsourcing. What's new here is for uh, doing some outsourcing of things that Intel is known for, uh, like CPUs. Uh, the other thing is this $20 billion dollar, dollar, uh, investment, and uh, this is for either IFS foundry uh, or for uh, internal consumption. I think it's only the start. I, I do think they will uh, get more money from the EU and from the US, I think combined, uh, the two continents are offering $80 billion for uh, semiconductors. And I think that uh, if uh, departments, let's call it uh, Department of Defense, uh, potentially even anything under critical infrastructure uh, like carrier may require uh, more of these chips to be built uh, on US soil by a US company. Um, and, and that kind of, um, you know, narrows it down to uh, Intel and, and Global Foundries. And um, Global Foundries is really focused on um, things like IoT and 5G, as opposed to kind of the bleeding edge. At, at IFS, listen, Intel has tried the Foundry game uh, before. Uh, they've had very small degrees of success. Uh, I actually think they're serious this time, and it sounds credible to me. Uh, first off, you have to have uh, standardized everything to do uh, a foundry play uh, because you're importing and exporting from things like TSMC and Global Foundries and Samsung. You have to reuse content and you have to have an IP library. And I think uh, the only thing that made my jaw drop uh, about the IP library and what they were offering is first off, it sounds like they're offering x86 CPU cores. Okay, so think about that. Anybody uh, uh, who, you know, you could hypothetically AMD could be uh, doing that uh, out of there and potentially even tease up uh, another uh, x86 company. The other thing was Risk Five, okay? Um, and has a little bit of support. Uh, I was, ex uh, and that's why it was surprising. And then the, there was uh, uh, ARM support. So um, uh, big news, I mean, Daniel, um, you know, this is causing shock waves. I mean, I'm getting, you know, contacted by, you know, data center providers, uh, PC providers, uh, Intel competitors. Uh, I'm actually talking to two of them today. <laughs> I think giving, giving me their case on uh, either why this is a bad idea or a good idea. Uh, I think Qualcomm's in, right? Who do I expect to be in there? I expect Qualcomm to be a customer. Is that, does that sound crazy? Yeah, right now it does. But guess what? Qualcomm used to actually fab their modems at Intel, okay? So it wouldn't be the first time. It's not going to be revolutionary. Uh, final, finally, I want to talk about the IBM. The last time IBM worked with Intel on chip IP was in the 80s and DRAM, okay? That just gives you an idea of, of how long it's been. And IBM, unbeknownst to most, because most people don't pay attention, is the leader in research uh, for transistor uh, and process technology. Why do I think that? Guess what? Guess where Samsung gets theirs from? They get theirs from IBM, uh, the second largest chip manufacturer uh, out there and leading edge on memory. So, um, gosh, Intel the partner, look at that. IP that's all over the place supporting everybody. Uh, standard tools supporting everybody, uh, working with IBM on, on not only process, but packaging technology, and then working with Samsung, TSMC, and Global Foundries more than they were uh, before. A lot of execution. This is, I'm not Babe Ruthing this. There's a ton of execution. Uh, there is zero major changes that Intel can make to their architecture uh, and manufacturing capability, their own in-house manufacturing capabilities until 2023. So between now and 2023, it's going to be about marketing. It's going to be about turbocharging their fab. Like one good example today, you know, uh, recently is taking chips to, you know, five gigahertz uh, and, uh, and, and, and beyond, like using their current fab uh, uh, to go out there. So yeah, it could be, you know, I still think that AMD will gain server market share in uh, 2022. Uh, I'm less positive on client market share uh, uh, in 2022. Intel clawed back some. They they brought a lot of low-end business for uh, Chromebooks. Why? Because they could. 
Uh, but but we'll see, man. Chips are exciting. Chips are fun. Chips are sexy. Yeah, they they really are. It's been a huge week for that particular announcement. It definitely dominated a lot of headlines. That's why it's getting the the top of our show, and it's going to get a little more time than some of our other topics. Um, last thought or two before we move on, Pat, because you covered a ton of ground. I thought I covered a lot. You covered more. Um, long long and short here. Um, you know, my note out to the market was essentially anyone that's bearish on Intel's announcements this week are bearish because they doubt execution. You cannot look at what they announced in terms of adding 100 billion in Foundry TAM, um, the diversification of the business, the the, uh, the shared uh, progress, partnerships, expansion that Gelsinger announced and think this is bad. The only thing you can think is bad is there's no way they're going to get it done. And you know what? Every one of us, Pat, you, me, we're all sitting there raising our hands saying, Pat uh, Gelsinger, we like what you're saying. Now you got to do it. And, yeah. and you know, he, he said something in his one of his presentations that maybe is the earmark of what we all need to watch. He talked about at VMware his say-do ratio. You know, it was what gets said versus what gets done. And he wants to have a very high ratio in terms of everything he's saying getting done. And if he does, I think the future looks bright for Intel. 